Hi, my name is Ryan Macbeth. I spent 20 years as an infantryman and three years as an infantry instructor. And if there's one thing I love, it's a good cultural awareness briefing. You've decided to come to Ukraine and fight as part of the International Legion, and I think that's awesome. A good portion of the world thinks that as well. If you're watching this, you probably served in Iraq or Afghanistan or spent time in Korea, and you might understand how different those cultures are from the West. So here's a couple of things when you're not on the front lines to remember. When you come to Ukraine, be prepared for bureaucracy, formal and informal organizational structures, formal and informal ways of getting things done, understand that things can go really wrong and change for unexpected reasons, but also be prepared for the kind of accommodating people who will do amazing things for you. Now, there's going to be some transition time to understand Ukrainian culture. It's important to recognize when there's cultural differences and when things are wrong. Having sensitivity to different cultures will help you in this environment. In the International Legion, you're going to work with Ukrainians, Georgians, Belarusians, Chechnyans, uh, French, Brits, other Americans, Latvians, Moldovians, and people from many other cultures. So let's start with general culture. The name of the country you're in right now is called Ukraine, not the Ukraine. And I think calling it the Ukraine goes all the way back to the Chernobyl accident when Ukraine suddenly popped up on the world stage and the TV news had to denote a specific area of the Soviet Union. Today, the people of Ukraine hate it when their country is referred to as the Ukraine because it symbolizes being a region in Russia. Next. Beware of the date format. I think that America is the only country on earth that uses month, day, year. Ukraine uses day, month, year, and sometimes year, month, day, but never the American version. The next is how are you? If you're from New Jersey like me, when you greet somebody, you say, hey buddy, how you doing? You don't actually want to know how they're doing, but if you say this to a Ukrainian, you're gonna get an honest answer. And now it's a conversation. Now, you know how I said, hey buddy, how you doing? Friendship isn't casual in Ukraine. The title friend or buddy has to be earned. And friends tend to be very honest with each other in Ukraine. So don't be surprised if your Ukrainian friend tells you exactly how he feels. Now, when you introduce yourself, if you want Ukrainians to like you instantly, refer to your area as an oblast, which is kind of like an administrative district. So if I introduced myself, I would say, hi, I'm Ryan Macbeth from Silver Spring Oblast. They seem to think that's really funny. As Americans, we smile a lot, even when we walk up to the cash register to pay for coffee. Ukrainians tend to reserve expressing emotions for close family, friends, and maybe close colleagues. Now with this comes small talk. You know how in America you might be in an elevator and you say, oh, it's hot out there, huh? Small talk isn't very common in Ukraine, especially among older men. Another question you probably shouldn't ask is, what do you do? In America, we tend to define ourselves by our employment. This really isn't the case in Ukraine. If you ask a Ukrainian, what do you do while he's at work, he'll probably answer the question, oh, I, I machine pipes. But if you're outside of work, they'll talk about family, hobbies, or sports. Now, speaking of work, there are a lot of recognized holidays in Ukraine, even for industries like Atom Workers Day or Finance Officers Day, so be prepared for unexpected holidays. I also have to talk about clothing. There is a traditional Ukrainian garment called a vishivanka, which has embroidered designs that kind of started as a way to ward off evil spirits. There's even a special Vishivanka day to encourage people to wear this traditional garment and support people who perform this kind of embroidery. Now, let's talk about women. There's two things to remember when dealing with women. Always hold the door open for women and don't shake a woman's hand unless it's at a formal meeting. And while we're on the subject of shaking hands, if you do enter a room, shake hands with every single person unless there is a ridiculously large group of people. And no matter how cold it is outside, always take off your gloves to shake hands. Speaking of the cold, don't be surprised if you see mothers putting their babies in a stroller and taking them for a walk, even if it is bitterly cold. Another thing to keep in mind, Ukrainians are more relaxed about time and are used to a culture where there's a lot of bureaucracy and red tape, so be prepared for delays. And speaking of delays, 
People might not be inclined to give you detailed directions if you are lost, so keep that in mind when traveling. So let's talk about traveling. Blowing your nose in public is considered bad manners. Cover your mouth if you yawn. Always help the elderly, and if on public transportation, give up your seat for them. And when you do offer help, do so multiple times to show sincerity. Oh, and one more thing. If you do take public transportation, the seats are numbered on buses that travel between cities, so make sure you take the right seat. If you are traveling by car, a lot of Ukrainian vehicles might seem like they're trapped in the 1980s. They can be really old. They, they might have a manual transmission, a cracked windshield, and they break down, but people are used to it, so it's okay. Now, if you enter somebody's house, always take off your shoes. Sometimes during winter, they will invite you into the warmest part of the house so your shoes are warm when you leave. If you do visit someone's house, bring alcohol and cake for the adults. If there's children in the home, have some little candies available for them. If you bring flowers, bring an odd number of flowers. Even numbers of flowers are for funerals. Let's talk about money. Never hand your money to the cashier. Put your money on the counter or in the tray and the cashier will put your change in the tray. When it comes to money, Ukrainians do a lot of banking on their phones and you can transfer money from one bank card to another in seconds. You just need the person's phone number and a card number. When you're shopping, all prices are listed with tax included so you don't have to do any mental calculations as to what something's gonna cost. And Ukrainians tip in restaurants, usually 10%. Let's talk about food and drink. You can get good food at gas stations. Hot dogs, coffee, soup, and fresh orange juice can usually be gotten from a gas station. Traditional Ukrainian dishes include selo, which is like lard but contains more fat. It's consumed with garlic or onions, pickles, and black bread. Borscht, which is a beet soup. Vareniki, which are basically dumplings or pierogies if you're Polish. Holobisi, which are stuffed cabbage rolls with rice, buckwheat, meat, and usually a tomato sauce. Pampushki, or garlic bread. Serniki, which is kind of like a cottage cheese pancake. And don't forget that Ukrainians also eat pizza, McDonald's, and KFC as well. Don't start eating until everyone is at the table. Praise the host for their cooking skills and finish everything on your plate. Don't waste food, especially bread. Back in the 1930s, Ukraine suffered an event called the Holodomor, which was essentially a famine that was engineered by the Soviet Union. Grain was forcibly exported from Ukraine and about three to five million Ukrainians died of starvation. Now, some people say it was designed to prevent Ukraine from rebelling and going independent. Others say it was just collectivization and mismanagement. Regardless, don't ever waste bread. Now, we're going to talk about alcohol, I promise. But first, I want to talk about two non-alcoholic drinks that you might want to know about. Kompot and Uzvar. Kompot is made uh, from boiling dried fruits and sometimes sugar or raisins are added. If you add gelatin, it becomes something called Kisil, which is usually reserved for dessert. Usfar is similar to kompot, except that berries are boiled instead of fruit, and sugar isn't added, making it more of a sour drink. Okay, now what you've been waiting for, alcohol. Alcohol is almost always present at Ukrainian meals and used to perform toasts. The liquor is usually vodka. It's drank straight as a shot and followed by eating a small bite of bread, meat, a pickle, whatever. And there will be multiple toasts throughout the night. Now listen, if you don't drink for whatever reason, you need to let the host know early and politely refuse for health reasons. They'll know what you mean. The time between the first and second toast is usually minutes. There's a saying that the gap between the first and second toast should be so small that a bullet could fly between them. So you're going to be toasting again quickly. The third toast will almost always be the fallen brothers and the military community but to women among civilians who grew up in the Soviet Union. And if you do provide a toast as a guest, you must always be sincere. Now I wanna talk about topics to avoid. I know that none of you are gonna bring this up, but I'm gonna say it anyway. There's a couple of topics that you really don't need to talk about. The first is saying that Russia and Ukraine are the same nation. So that's, that's kind of a given. The next is that Ukraine should give up some territory to satisfy Russia. Don't talk about that. Don't talk about peaceful Russians dying within Russian territory. Everything is considered revenge. Don't talk about good Russians. Yes, not everybody's the same. There are some Russians who do not believe in this war. There are some Russians who've been forced to fight.
But right now, Ukraine is in full survival mode. They don't need to hear this. Never call a Ukrainian a holohol. The word is Russian slang for a provincial Ukrainian, kind of like a redneck or a hillbilly, but it's much, much worse. Don't say it. Don't discuss politics, not even American politics with Ukrainians. We don't have any political problems compared to them. I also have to talk about homosexuality. Ukraine is kind of stuck in the same place America was in the 1990s. Some LGBTQ plus pride events have taken place in major cities and younger people are coming around with more open and accepting views of homosexuality, but this probably isn't the case with anyone middle age or older. So it's just better to avoid the topic altogether. Now, since I'm talking about talking, let's talk about language. Russian and Ukrainian may sound similar, but that's because they're both from the same Slavic root, kind of like how Portuguese and Spanish sound similar. The Russian language is widespread across Ukraine because the Ukrainian language was suppressed for years by the Russian Empire and then later by the Soviets who didn't want any strong national groups in their union. Try to learn some basic phrases in Ukrainian. They will appreciate it. Now let's talk about religion. Most Ukrainians consider themselves to be Christian, specifically Ukrainian Orthodox, which split from the Russian Orthodox Church in 2018. As you move from east to west through the country, the people become more religious and you start to see more of a Catholic influence. Now let's talk about some military specific things. The Ukrainian army is not well equipped by the government like the American army is. A lot of Ukrainian soldiers are using their own money and equipment that is either donated or purchased or crowdfunded. These soldiers are gonna be treating their equipment with the kind of care you don't see in Western armies, where if it breaks, you just go to supply and get a new one. That being said, if you're working on a wounded soldier and need to cut through clothes to render treatment, cut along the seam, either on the seam of the pants or, or on the seam of a shirt. If a soldier survives his injury, he will try to wash and repair his clothes. If you're dealing with a leg injury, cut the boot laces if possible, not the boot itself. Laces can be replaced, but good boots are rare. Finally, Ukraine's constitution allows for a freedom of movement, but the government wants to limit the number of people who can go into different regions and take pictures of weapons or systems. You're gonna be issued a parapushka or a pass that is good for specific areas, don't venture into areas that aren't covered by a patapushka. Now, if you're a soldier, you're probably used to doing things the army way, but forcing rigid methods from home is most likely to result in failure and frustration. Ukraine has a very young military. In some ways, they have a new culture. Having come out of the Soviet Union in 1991, they are still developing their infrastructure and logistics. Things break. People are late. To Ukrainians, experiencing a breakdown of a vehicle during an insertion is normal. They even say, this is normal. Staying flexible during times like this is vital to your success in the International Legion. I want to talk about planning. Westerners prefer to plan, make sand tables, write op orders, coordinate with command, team members, subordinates, left seat, right seat. We have whole planning sections. Ukrainians value doing. They view time spent planning as time that could be better spent doing the job. For example, Ukrainians are used to getting in the truck and just going on mission without asking questions. It is generally unheard of in the Ukrainian army for an enlisted subordinate to ask for details from an officer before going on mission. This is partially a holdover from the Soviet way, but it's also the way Ukrainians prefer to do things. So think of it like this before getting frustrated. Ukrainians bring resilience and courage to the table. Westerners bring a complete planning process to ensure operations run smoothly. Combining the two makes for a strong and skillful international legion. One final thing. Every soldier and civilian you meet is under a great deal of stress. Everyone is a family member who is fighting or has been killed in this war. They are under constant threat of missile attacks. There are people who have lost family members and homes. Be patient with them. Ukraine is gonna feel trauma for many years to come after this war. We want them to know we're here to help in more than just our fighting skills. And also remember, in this pivotal moment, you are stepping into history as warriors of freedom and champions of hope. Remember that your courage and sacrifice echo the values that bind us together as nations. 
As you stand united with the Ukrainian people, may your determination inspire hearts and ignite the light of liberty. Stay strong, stay safe, and know that your actions are making a profound difference in the world. We all believe in you, and we're with you every step of the way.